Hey, how's it going? It's me, Hayden, filming another video for Phoenix Music. Today's video was requested by Legend. So, um, yeah, he wants a big room video today, which is a pretty good request because I've actually got a uh, fully completed big room project file lying around. So I'm uh, going to show that in the video today. So, um, yeah, if you find anything in today's tutorial helpful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, drop a like down below, uh, feel free to suggest a video in the comments down below, and share this video if you have any producer friends. Okay, let's begin. Um, so I'll start by playing a bit of the track for you, I guess. So um yeah, that's uh, some of the track. The second part's got a bit of a variation. So bringing in the muffled lead on the beginning, and then also some claps here. But um yeah, so I'll start showing you some of the things individually. So for the intro, we've got this very very short punchy kit. Um, and we just boosted a little bit of the low mids here, and um, how I did this kick was I just got a normal EDM kick, and I just shortened the end of the kick. I brought it right back until there was hardly any audio left. So um, yeah, um, and if I show you what I mean, um, if you go into fades, you can literally just fade it right back like that so if you do it like that this is a clap but if you do it with a kick then yeah you can get that short punchy effect um so now i'll show you the claps so yeah standard edm clap you've probably heard that clap before a ride Rides pan slightly to the right, uh, and also the clap and the ride have a tiny little bit of saturation on it. Then when we get to here, we've got this uh, intro build thing. So um, yeah, that's basically just a snare build, but a side chain on it. Uh, pretty easy to do. Um, then if we go into effects, um, we've got this sound. Um, so yeah, just like a little down lifter thing. Then we've got this riser. So just a bit of side chain on that. Um, and then we've got this bass. This bass was made by removing all the low end from the big room kick, just so you have the uh, tonal frequencies, if uh, that makes any sense. 
you can kind of still hear the punchiness of the kick. But we've uh, got a kick, so that kind of hides underneath our actual kick. So if I play that with the kick. Yeah. Um, and then we've got this lead. So here we have a EQ, it starts off muffled, fades its way in, then we've uh, got a bit more EQ in here, and a bit of saturation, and some uh, pitch shifters here. Uh, those aren't really important though, those are just mainly because I'm too lazy to drag the notes up and down all the time, so I just put a pitch shifter on it. <laughs> um, and moving on to the next bit, so really easy intro, I'm pretty sure any average level producer can make an intro like that. Um, then we uh, go into this like sub drop. So yeah, that. Um, then we have this, uh, this fill. So I'm pretty sure that is a splice sample or something. And we'll throw this little shaker thing. And this crash. That's just made. You can probably see how that is made. It's uh, just reversed for the beginning. And then it's the correct way to go back down. So uh, this reverse bit is just this part reversed. So kind of like just like that really. Um, then we have this thing. Like a tribal shout kind of thing. Then we have the alarm. Um, Then we have this thing. Basically, the break is just built up of loads of random effects and stuff. It doesn't really have any melody or anything like that going on. Just like downlifters, things like that, sirens. Um, and then every now and again, we just have this little. Um, and then the crash again. And throughout this, we uh, keep the clap going. Then we get to the build, so snare build. I uh, won't show you much about the snare build, because I'm pretty sure everyone knows how to do a snare build. <laughs> um, then we've got the snare build from the intro in the build. And then we also bring the ride back in here. We keep the claps going through the build as well. And then we have this little fill. I sometimes like to put fills in the middle of the uh, build just to uh, keep it interesting so it, the build doesn't like lose your interest before you get to the drop. Um, and then we also have the intro bass in the build as well. And then we pitch it up. So that's just done here. Um, if you go into here, you can do it here. Um, or if you're in a different digital audio workstation, it would probably be a bit different, but uh, yeah. Um, then we have uh, the riser again, uh, downlifter again, 
Uh, I won't show you the stuff you've already heard. Um, and then we have the uh, lead uh, rising up again. But um, I've automated the volume a little bit with a compressor. Um, that's what this is doing here. Uh, just so that the lead in the uh, build is quieter than when it's in the drop. So the drop sounds louder when it comes in. Um, then we've got this reverse lead thing. That's just made by taking one note from the lead, uh, bouncing it down to audio, uh, and then just reversing the tail. Um, so we've actually got a mild layer in the um, drop. Uh, we've got the main one, which is this one. But we've also got this one. Um, so when we play those together. Barely makes any difference, but why not? It makes it slightly bigger than the uh, one from the um, build, so, you know. <laughs> um, then we also have noise. Follow in the rhythm of the melody, just so that we've got a bit more air on the melody. And then we've got this uh, downlifter again. But this time with some side chain. And then we've got this little percussion thing. Um, then a huge snare. And then another fill. Um, and then the big room kick. Possibly the main sound of the whole track, because that sound basically is big room. Uh, I'll quickly check if I've missed anything. Don't think I have. Um, there's one thing I will show you though. Uh, which is... If I can find it. Unless I took it off. I might have took it off. What I did have was OTT on the group channels. I can't seem to find it, so I must have taken it off. But uh, on the master channel, we have some limiters. Uh, I'll show you what they're doing. So the limiters are how I'm getting the volume. Uh, if I turn them off. Turn them on. So yeah. Then we've also got the volume automation on the build, so it's low in volume and then the volume goes right back up to, for when the uh, drop hits. And an EQ automation, we're fading out the uh, low end here. And this one just to remove the hissing sound right from the very top and boost the uh, low mids a little bit. Um, and just for some bonus stuff, I'll show you the uh, second drop as well, because uh, that one's uh, slightly different. Um, not a lot different, but slightly. Um, so in the uh, second drop, we oh, I forgot to show you the brass dabs. We also have these brass dabs. So um, yeah, um, but. I was going to show you the clap that's in the um, second drop. So this clap's only in the second drop, not the first drop. So that sounds like... And also... We have the uh, alarm siren thing side-chained in the uh, second drop as well.
and I'm pretty sure that's everything. I might have missed something, but hopefully I haven't. So, um, yeah, that's how you make a big room track. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, uh, drop a thumbs up down below, uh, feel free to request a tutorial or something in the comments down below, and share this video if you have any producer friends. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.